Alright, today we're going to be taking a look at solutions. So, first off, if we get into this chapter on solutions, what exactly is a solution? Well, pretty much it's as simple as this. Let's get us a beaker here and let's put some water in it. Now, one thing I want to get across is you're going to have to start thinking. It doesn't have to always be water in these problems. You don't have to mix everything in water. But anyway, uh, you, it, good grief, it could be gasoline for that matter. But anyway, usually what happens though is you have a liquid of some kind and then what you're going to do is you're going to take some other material and you're going to dissolve you're going to dissolve it into the liquid itself. So you need to go ahead though and get a couple of words kind of across to you. Whatever is doing the dissolving, that's what we'll call the solvent. So whatever's doing the dissolving, we will call the solvent. Whatever it is that you are dissolving, not that it would be a rectangle, but anyway, whatever it is you are dissolving, we'll draw some little powder in there. So bah, there's a bunch of powder in there. So whatever it is you're dissolving, that's what we call a solute. So the solute and the solvent combine, and together the solute and solvent is what is known as a solution. And the reason why this is important is you're going to have to understand these three words in order to do the problems. So the solvent does the dissolving, the solute gets dissolved, and then you've got the solution together. Well think about making, let's go for example, we're in the south, let's talk about sweet tea for instance. So as we get into the somewhat sweet tea, so let's draw our picture of sweet tea here. And somebody's already got the tea in it, so here's my tea. Blah, blah, blah. And so what happens is somebody's going to go and they're going to try and put some sugar into the tea. Well, the sugar is the solute. The water, which the tea is made from, is the solvent. And when you combine it all together, it becomes a solution, which means it should be homogeneous. It should look the same all the way throughout. And we'll go back and we'll talk more about all these notes a little bit more later. But when we have a test, we'll have about 10 question, multiple choice questions on there. And we'll have words like soluble and insoluble. And soluble just means you can dissolve something. Insoluble just means you cannot dissolve something in it. Say, for example, go home, throw you a big hunk of Crisco into a thing of water. What happens? Absolutely nothing. It won't dissolve at all. So anyway, that's this whole idea. Some things are soluble. Some things are insoluble. Now, again, we're not going to get... We're not going to get too crazy into these notes. We're going to go straight and start looking at the problems that we've got here. So I, what I'm actually going to do at this time is I'm going to go straight to the actual problems itself. So how do we measure how strong it is? You hear people talking about concentration. For example, the coffee I make. Uh, some people say that my coffee could be considered strong. I don't know, just because it makes a spoon stand up doesn't necessarily mean it's strong, but still, that's what some people might consider strong coffee. I like to throw in like a scoop per cup of coffee. Well, I don't want to drink just straight water. So anyway, so I drank a strong, a concentrated solution. I've got a lot of solute in there, whereas weak might be more dilute. So. We can't just use the word strong and weak, though. We've got to have a way of putting a mathematical term to that. What does it mean to be strong or weak? Well, that's where this term molarity comes into play. So let's actually do a molarity question. Well, I'm going to start me a little formula page here, and I suggest you do the same thing. So our first new equation for this unit, big M, which stands for molarity, whose unit is big M as well, Molarity is equal to moles of SOL, no, that's not implying nothing dirty, moles of SOL over liters of SOLN. So just in terms of abbreviations, when you see me use SOL, that's me talking about a solute. When you hear me using SOLV, that's my solvent. And then when you hear S-O-L-N in an equation, or see it, that's implying my solution altogether. So anyway, that's what we're getting at with all this. So anyway, so here's my basic equation for molarity. It's how many moles of something have been dissolved in a liter of solution. Now, 
I know right offhand it looks odd to have this leader here. Well, that's because they're trying to tell you whenever you're using this formula, your volumes have to be written down in liters. Now, I'm going to be honest. There's really only two common problems. Problems that give you big M and get, give you molarity and give you liters and ask you to find moles. Or they'll give you, and most time if you find moles, then you'll convert to grams. Sometimes they'll give you grams, you convert to moles, and then you divide and get big M. And that's basically it. They're pretty stock problems. There's nothing too crazy in those. Let's go ahead and do some of those problems, if I can find some to sit here and work. Here we go. I'm going to do number one out of the homework. If you need a chance, you can copy those down. But anyway, okay, so now we're back to working them again. So working number one, and I'm going to kind of leave this sheet because I want to be there for my purposes as a formula sheet. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do number one. And it says how many grams, so we're looking for a mass of potassium chloride. Well, that would be K, which is a plus one, Cl minus one. How many grams of KCl are required to make 250 milliliters of a 2.5 M solution? Well, 250 milliliters, that's my volume. So that's 0.25, oops, I cannot write, 0.25 liters. That would be my big M over here. So I've given you volume, I've given you molarity. So if I'm going to do this problem, I'm going to write down my equation. Big M molarity is equal to moles of solute over liters of solution. This problem gave me my big M. It says that that is 2.5. So 2.5 equals moles of solute over my liters, which was 0.25. And now all I've got to do is multiply. 2.5, turn it on first. 2.5 times 0.25, and that's point. 0.625 moles for an answer. Well, specifically, this was moles of KCl. Well, it didn't ask for moles. It asked for grams. So I can come back, though, 0.625 moles of KCl. Draw my line, put my X, draw my line. Uh, let's see if we can do this one. How many grams of KCl are in a mole of KCl? Well, hmm, you should be able to do this about as fast as me. 39, 35, 74. Now we're going to multiply times 0.625. And I've got 46.3 grams of KCL. There's my answer. Most of these problems either look like this, where they give you... They give you molarity. They give you this volume, and then you find grams. If the problem doesn't look like this, it's going to give you the mass, which you will convert to moles, and then you plug back in and get your answer. That's your basic two problems right there on these. Now, another common thing in terms of doing these problems is what we call a dilution. A dilution is when we just water something down. I do it all the time in lab. Di wow, I just realized. I don't know if I can spell the word dilution, but we'll see if I can't do. Dilution. Wow, that's horrible. Dilution. <laughs> there. Okay, so I can spell it now. So a lot of times in lab what we do is we dilute something. We add water to something and water it down, which means the moles of what I have don't change. So let's say I had a thing of salt water, and let's say we had a thing of salt water. Here, we'll just throw this in. So let's say here's a thing of salt water, blah, 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 N-A-C-L in water. And let's say that we had a mole let's say we had a mole of salt in that water. Well, even if we add more water there's still only a mole of salt in there. It's just now it's spread out or diluted into more water. So since moles is a constant, we can create a proportion of just M times L. 
Well, I'm not going to write m times l. I'm going to write it like this. My dilution equation, m1 v1 equals m2 v2. And this will be a very easy problem for you to notice. It will have two m's, two v's. It's going to be noticed. Now, notice something. I didn't write l. I just wrote a v, and that's because this is a proportion. So your units for volume doesn't matter, which means if you want to use this problem and you want to use milliliters, go for it. It's not going to hurt anything. So let's do an example of this one now. Look for a sheet of paper. I think this is example number two in the homework problems, which I've now lost. There it is. If we take a look at it, what volume, this should be a big M right there, what volume of 12 molar HCl should be required to make 100 mils of 1.2 molar? So when you see big M, big M, you're like, hey, this is a dilution. Good. I love this question. So here's what's going on in the lab. Somebody wants to make 100 mils of weak acid. And now your job is to try and figure out how much strong acid you need to water down to make this. So how much strong acid do we need to start with? Well, the equation is pretty simple. It's just MV equals MV. That's all we've got to do to dilute something. So we've got 12 times V. I'm going to write my units for a reason. I want to make 1.2 molar acid times I want to make 100 mils of it. This is why I wrote my units, just to show you that units don't matter. You see, the molarities cancel. And so now look at what you've got. 1.2 times 100. Well, that's pretty easy. That's 120. 120 divided by 12. Well, my answer is 10. So in other words, if I wanted to make 100 mils of 1.2 acid, what it's going to take is this. It's going to take... 10 milliliters of 12 molar HCl, and then I'm going to add 90 milliliters of water to it. So I'll have my 10 milliliters of acid, I'll add my 90 mils of water, and then I'll have 100 milliliters of 1.2 molar acid. Now, just for reference, this is not how you would do this. You would blow your face up when you dump that water on the acid. What you actually need to do is you need to add some water first. So in this case, you might add 40 milliliters of water. Then you add the acid, the 10 mils, and then you come back and you finish adding the other 50 milliliters of water. You never, never, ever pour water straight into strong acid. As soon as the water hits the acid, the water will boil, and it will blow the mixture of water and acid right back up in your face. That's a good safety note right there. Always remember, safety first. All right. Oh, yeah, no horse play in the lab. Anyway, other than that, all right. Let's go ahead and do this next question. I think it's number three that's in here. So here, this one's pretty easy. How many moles of HCl are in 300 milliliters of 6 molar HCl? Well, you know your equation. The equation is nothing but big M equals moles of solute over liters of solution. This problem gave you 300 milliliters, 6 molar. Well, this would be 6 equals moles over liters, 300 mils, which would be 0.3 liters, which would be 1.8 moles of HCl. Could we convert that to grams? Oh, yeah, if we wanted, we'd just do our conversion. I think HCl weighs uh, 36 per 1. And we could have grams if we wanted it. But anyway, that's about how easy these problems are. Uh, take one more second while we're here, and I'll add one more formula to this sheet. Sometimes you'll do a dilution problem, except instead of mass molarities and volumes, it'll give you masses and percents. Well, that's pretty easy, too. You just M1 
percent one equals m2 percent two. The great thing about doing a dilution with masses and percents is the fact that you don't even have to chain move your decimal in your percents because it's a proportion. One more equation I will go ahead and give you. Pretty easy problems, but here I'll write this equation down. And this is for if you've got a problem and it's got straight percents in it, which you'll see sometimes. No big deal. Your percent solute is equal to the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution. Now, I will say this. If you go to use this equation, make sure if the problem gives you a percent and it says it's like 96% something, make sure you write 0.96 when you plug it into that formula. We didn't have to here, but that's only because this was a proportion. So if you use this percent equation, you kind of need to throw this in here. And I don't know that you'll need it, but I'm going to write it over here. What would mass of solution be? Well, your solution would be the mass of your solute and your solvent combined. So here, Basically, let's make up a problem to go with that, and then we'll wrap up this video and be done with it. Everybody's probably tired of hearing me talk already, for real. So let's say somebody had 100 grams of water, and they dumped 20 grams of table salt in there. Let's say there's the problem. And they said, what is the percent? of this solution or the percent of the solute. Well, mass of solute over mass of solution. Well, this would be easy. All you'd have to do is I put 20 grams of salt in. That's what's getting dissolved. That's my solute. So it'd be 20 over the solution, which the solution is everything combined, which means my solution would be 120. Now, remember, if you're doing the percent, times your answer by 100, and that's how you'd get your final answer on here. So in the case of this one, 20 divided by 120, 0.166666. So this would be a 17% solution. And that's the only trick to doing one of those problems. Anyway, that should get you through the first eight problems in your homework. Anyway, thank you. Bye-bye.